What's up, everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Hope uh, things are going well for you. Just uh, finished working out and was thinking, as I always do when I work out, just uh, thinking about Sunday school lesson I recently taught, which was about being impulsive. And it you know made the point that God is never impulsive. And usually when we look back on our impulsiveness, we feel pretty foolish. And the point was is that you know it's easy to be impulsive. And you can garner enough strength in your life to be impulsive and to follow God for a short time. And you are, you even have enough strength. It made the point. You even had enough strength to make it through the hard times on your own. But what about the ordinary, everyday, mundane, activities of life that requires the grace of God you know somewhere ingrained in us we think that we're supposed to do something miraculous and great for God that's what we read about in the Bible you know we read about Moses parting the Red Sea we read about Moses bringing water out of the rock we read about Joseph's faithfulness, and leading the children of Israel out of poverty and taking care of them for seven years during the famine. We read about Peter walking on the water. And we think somewhere in our mind that we're supposed to do great things like that or God's not pleased with us. But the truth is, it's harder to just live each day following God's leadership. And it, it took me, and it made me think of Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. the salt. We're to be the salt of the earth. Which means every day we are to make a difference for the people around us. We're to bring flavor. What does salt do? It brings flavor. We're to bring flavor to people's lives. Not to be dull and stale and unalive, so to speak. Just, hey, how you doing today? Well, I'm getting by. You ever heard that one? I've said that one. Getting by. We're not to just get by. We don't just get by. We're supposed to flavor people's lives. The salt. What did Jesus say? Well, when salt's lost its flavoring, it's useless. And people can just trample on it under their feet. When we lose our flavor, then we're of no good. But let's think about salt. Where does it get its flavor from? That mineral doesn't just suddenly decide, you know what, I want to be salty today. I want to be salty today. I don't want to be another mineral. I want to be salt. No. It, uh... It's made salty from the beginning by the Lord. That's where it gets its flavor. Now, let's not get into the science of it. I don't know how salt, you know, the scientific definition, but what I say is salt's a mineral that's in the ground that God put in there. So, it was salt from the beginning. 
So it was by the grace of God that it became salt. So why do I think that I can be salty any other way than by the grace of God? So what am I saying here? I'm so, you know, I started off and said we want to do miraculous things for God. How did Moses part the Red Sea? By the grace of God. How did Moses bring water out of the rock? Grace of God. How did Joseph ascend to be the most powerful person in the world at the time? Oh, same answer, grace of God. So how can I be salty and useful for God each and every day? Oh, I believe we already know the answer. It's by the grace of God. So what is my role? Well, I can't expect God's grace if I won't be obedient to His calling. I must be obedient to His calling. That's all that's required. When Moses parted the Red Sea, all that was required was his obedience to do what God had called him to do. You know, Moses had all that murmuring around him, and they were complaining, and they said, why did God bring us out here to this desert to die? We could have died back in Egypt. But Moses didn't listen to it because he believed God's promises. He believed God's promises to the point that he said, I'm going to be obedient because my God promised me something was going to happen. That same motivation should be in me. I have God's promises. I know them all. I've read my Bible. I know the promise. I know the end result, what's going to happen. So that should spur me to be obedient each and every day and not listening to the murmuring of the outside world. Just like those Israelites murmured those thousands of years ago, we hear murmurings today on all sides. But our job as Christians is to remember the promises of God, just like Moses did, and be obedient to his call, just like Moses did. And when we do that, no, we may not ever part the water, and we may not ever walk on water, and we may not ever hit a rock and get water out of it, and we may never become the most powerful person in the world like Joseph did. But our obedience is just as pleasing to God as their obedience was. I want you to think about that for a minute. My obedience is just as pleasing to God as Moses' obedience, as Abraham's obedience, as Joseph's obedience, as David's. You can name them all in that book we call the Bible. And all of those great things they did always came out of their obedience. And that is what pleases God. Not the end result. The end result doesn't please God. If I was obedient and 500 people got saved because of my obedience, or if I was obedient and one person was encouraged because of my obedience, both of those please God because the things that happened after that were by His grace. They were of His plan, not mine. I didn't add anything to it that made it better. All I did was be obedient. And that is what God wants. That is the sacrifice that pleases Him. So, this is a message to myself just as much as it is to you. Quit trying to add stuff to obedience. That is all that you have to do. The rest of it, God's got worked out. He's got it. He decides what happens after the obedience. Whether you 
part the waters or pay somebody's electric bill. God decides what happens after you're obedient. You, you, I don't have anything to do with the results. All I get to do is be part of the process. He loves me enough and has blessed me enough that he says, I'm going to let you be part of this process. You be go. What does he say? You go and be salty, and I'll work the rest of it out. Well, how can I be salty? Be obedient each and every day. God bless you. I hope, I hope you don't struggle with obedience like I do at times. Just, just give it to him. He'll take care of the results. That's the great part. We don't have to worry about what happens after our obedience. He takes care of it. God bless you. Have a great day.